So study skills, feel free to pause the video, give it a proper read through, just context so you know where we're at in your notes and how you should structure your answer, just the, the tone, the vibe. 3.1 state two actions that you may unintentionally commit in the examination room that may be considered dishonest. Um, well, you could make notes during reading time. I see that one quite a bit. I'm not a teacher though, I just tutor privately. So make notes during reading time. Yeah, but as a student, I used to see that quite a bit, especially at university. Uh, and just talking to other learners as well, that is extremely dishonest. Okay, what could you guys be discussing? 3.2, why do you think some learners may feel pressurized to perform well in the NSC examinations? Well, it, there's just high crippling expectations as well from parents, from siblings, from peers, from whoever. And they may not want to disappoint these parties if they don't meet the required standards. Um, they might not even get financial aid or get admitted to the university program that they want to. 3.3, explain how dishonesty during NSC examinations could impact a learner's admission to higher education institutions. Well, they may not receive the NSC certificate and therefore they can't get in. Um, and that is crucial for admission to higher institutions or HEIs, tertiary institutions rather, as their examination results may be cancelled or withheld. Yeah, and they might have a pretty ugly disciplinary record too. Uh, it may reflect very poorly on them, they might have formal reprimands on it, and it just it's just viewed negatively by higher education institutions. 3.4, discuss two ways in which you could revise your own study strategies to ensure that you are well prepared for examinations. So look, regarding 3.4, we need two really good ones. Okay, it's two times two. So you could break down your study material and just make it more manageable, like into bite-sized pieces, manageable. And that could assist you in nailing down your study goals or objectives a lot better. Goals, typically short-term, objectives are longer-term. Um, and just assess your own study techniques, like your own techniques, assess them, see whether they're actually working for you. And if it's not, then well, change, change it up. And uh, just a few other ones like identify areas that need more focus or, you know, change up your environment if you just feel things aren't working all that well. Let's take a look at 3.5. Assess two ways in which honoring the NSC examination pledge may help you maintain some level of academic integrity. So this is like, you know, preparation for finals, but it may compel you to make a more personal commitment to uphold these standards. And it, it strengthens your resolve to act ethically, um, even when you're stressed out a bit during your examination. So just this whole idea of a, a personal commitment, I'm just going to write personal com, just to strengthen your own ethics. And it also instills a sense of accountability in you, like you've got a huge job here, literally only got one job in matric, and that's just to nail down your examinations as best you can. I hope it's like that. I hope you're not like a breadwinner for your family or anything, but that is the nature of being South African. Many, many students head their households in Mzanzi. So yeah, if you've just got the responsibility of matric, just, yeah, be, be grateful for it. Appreciate that, that is your only major worry right now in life because things could be a whole lot worse. Matter of luck, you know. Um, so yeah, be more accountable uh, and it ensures that you take responsibility and you're reliable for your own actions and you just prevent more dishonest behavior. So you're just responsible for upholding your own code of conduct, basically. 3.6, I'm going to change a bit of color. Um, it is a, a two times three question. So you need two solid points, clear, succinct, distinct, completely different from each other with a lot of meat on that bone. So... Analyze how having strong work ethics could enhance your professional skills in future. Uh, in each answer, also indicate how this could contribute to long-term career success. So having strong ethics, again, it's it's all about responsibility and self-discipline. And it may help you to maintain focus on these long-term goals. And this consistent performance may foster a more stable career path. And it opens up new opportunities. And you could also start to collab with others. So that's going to be point one. Point two is I kind of it kind of follows on but you can collaborate with others and it it fosters a whole sense of teamwork foster like Lyle Foster who scored at Old Trafford yesterday I don't know if you guys watch soccer you'd, you'd get that um and it lead, could lead to potential lead leadership roles and as a result your remuneration should increase as well managers just get paid more so yeah you need one point and you need like a really good substantiation like within that good point like two clear like substantiation points and you don't need to quote evidence from the source or anything like that. Uh, the answers are not there. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one.